Hi, everybody, and welcome to Pace Studio on the Road. We're here in East Nashville at Instrument Head Live with Ron Gallo. Ron, it's great to see you, man. Thank you for doing this. We're back, baby. It's great to be here. <laughs> Dom, it's wonderful to see you. Kiara, thank you for coming. This, is, uh, this feels really good. It's, uh, this is a wonderful way to start the second to last day. We've got uh, um, a lot of wonderful programming coming up, and we really, really appreciate you being part of it. And we're about to hear a lot of music, man. We're going to hear um, uh, three, three songs from the upcoming album. It'll be out in March 2021, Piecemeal. And mm -hmm. what's coming up first? Well, we're going to start. Um, the first two are going to go into each other, but they're, I guess, uh, my version of love songs. The first one's called Hide Myself Behind You, and then it's gonna go into Please Don't Die. Same time. 
could be guys with bombs strapped to their chest brushing the shoulder in the train station while you're wearing my favorite dress These sound great, dude. Thank you for sharing the music with us today. We, um, so I know that the, this collection of songs was, you started writing and then there was an, an interruption where you weren't able, where you had to step away from it for a minute and then finish at a later date. I was wondering, were you able, were you able to slide back into the same frame of mind when you came back to finish them? As, or were you, did you even bother to try to get back into the same frame of mind or did you just allow yourself to exist in, a, in the frame of mind that you were in, the, the new one, nine months later? Well, what's funny is that the world kind of created that same situation because most of the songs I wrote, um, I was actually over in Italy. We had ended basically three years of touring. I was completely burnt, was completely sick of myself and playing. And I got to a point where I was like, hey, it's time to kind of break and go on like a hiatus and... I was gonna spend you know, the summer over in Italy and then I got sent back because we had some sort of immigration visa related issues. So I wrote all these songs during summer 2019 when I was basically self-isolating in my house in Nashville. We were separate. It was just kind of like life just kind of shifted in a way that I didn't expect. So what's interesting about it is I started and wrote all the songs during that time and then I was able to go back to Italy eventually. We started recording there. And then I was going to finish the record. And I ended up finishing it basically in quarantine back in March. Um, so I was sort of the same thing, that situation that I was in. I was kind of forced back into it, the same period of like self-isolation in the same room. So it was no real effort to return <laughs> to the same mindset. Um, and now I've just been in that mindset in that same state for uh, a year now. And so it's... It is what it is, but it was kind of funny how that happened. It took no effort to return to that place. So, yeah, the self-isolating, inward, introspective, yeah, solitary place. So, yeah. And can you talk? Can you talk a bit about some of? Uh, I mean, being being forced into the situation that most of the world is in right now. Some of the. Uh, I mean, you're forced. To, you decided to take a step back, and then the situation forced you to uh, to continue to take that step back. Can you talk about some of the stuff outside of music that's been, that you've actually had time to focus on and develop, to develop just yourself outside of the context of music? Yeah, I mean, as much of a struggle, I guess, this time's been for all people, I think some really amazing things have happened too. Like we were talking earlier, the veil has been lifted on pretty much all of the, you know, systemic flaws in our culture and our country in the music business and everything. So a lot of things have been kind of exposed because the ground has basically been 
pulled out from everyone. So, you know, there's, kind of, there's a lot of ugly truth there. So I think it's kind of amazing that all of us were sitting still long enough to be able to actually address these things. Because normally when life is normal, you know, it's just easy to be distracted and not face like kind of what's always going on there. But so that's been good. I mean, I think we've collectively done that. I've definitely done that personally, but also learned a lot about recording. Kiata's gotten really good at baking. <laughs> Dom's baking pizzas regularly. He built a whole recording studio. I mean, I think ultimately we've learned a lot of stuff that otherwise there just wouldn't have been time for. And I've also think, at least I have, I've learned how to value myself a little bit more because especially as a musician, you tend to get into this mindset. You're just constantly on the go and you're grinding, you're grinding and you're like, I'm lucky to be here. But this, this past year has kind of exposed that no artists are on solid ground. So I kind of feel like I learned how to value myself a little more too. And when things do return, it's like, not let people take advantage. Because that's kind of everywhere in the, the music world. So yeah. I don't know. I think when we re-enter back into things, we're all going to be like stronger, smarter, more aware. So it's, it's nice. Yeah, it's definitely been nice to have some kind of dynamics to what we're doing where you're just, uh, you're, you're not going 100% all the time. That stepping exactly. back, I mean, we're crazy busy this week and it feels wonderful, but it right. feels this wonderful because it's not at all times. We did have some time to reflect in between. Like, do you know anybody that was not completely burnt, anxious, stressed, and miserable before this happened? It, it, no. When I think back no. on it, it's like there's this kind of this idea that everything at one point was better, but I don't actually remember anyone being any happier or at peace than they are now. So it's a weird, like, complicated thing, because like you said, you, know, you guys have been really busy this week, but it's not an endless grind. And I think it's the same for us. It's like yeah. finding that inner quiet, forced inner quiet. Well, dude, it feels really, really good to connect in this situation. I'm glad that you guys are all here today sharing the music, and uh, there is more music to share. What's, what's uh, coming up next? Well, speaking of places, um, this is Easter Island, and I guess this, out of all the places in the world, it's the place I want to go the most. It's like Mecca for me, so. Um, yeah, I'm just going to say a lot of words, and so I'm cram a lot of words into very small spaces about everywhere that I've thought about I'd rather be during this time. Seth. True. Yeah, man. Hey, man. Yeah. Appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Got Easter Island inside me, but lately I'm choosing to spend my time in Manhattan back alleys. Everyone has the same guitar, different case. Everyone has a glass jar, some crack, different pain, holding a pickled soul, stress, vinegar, fermenting. Don't wanna be the furniture, I wanna be the space. Don't wanna be the flowers, I wanna be the vase. And hold you while you wither away. No, 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 I can't live like this anymore. Could have been the goods, but I've been the store. Could have been the ceiling, but I've been on the floor. There's no dust up there, clean freak. Not a day past, not dictated by what people think of me. Got Easter Island, desert surrounding Santa Fe, a mountain of evergreens, white sands, Josh, a tree inside me. I've been living in the back alleys, Chinatown, Los Angeles, traffic jams. Guess I got to move, guess I got to choose. Don't wanna be the furniture, wanna be the space. I want to be the flowers, I want to be the vase And hold you while you wither away Why can't I get out of my own way? Why can't I get out of my own way these days? Why can't I get out of my own way? Why can't I get out of my own way these days? Spend three months in Brooklyn or London Take the train from Milan to Los Angeles of my past 
yeah, so Mr. Neverland, Marfa, Phoenix, Philly, doesn't matter really, mom's house, your house, wherever the sun is out, Dubai, hello, I know no matter where I go, I take myself with me. Yeah, thank you guys. Man, this is, um, a, I think, a bit of a continuation of what we were just talking about in terms of, of valuing uh, oneself, as specifically as a musician. And I mean, you emphatically and shit-stirringly made that point on that on the live stream uh, not that long ago, which was, I mean, that was a very bold and very effective move, man. I heard about it, and it, it felt real, real good to hear you make that statement. And can you, do you have any, any insight? I mean, can you give advice to other artists about how specifically like the mechanics of how um, valuing yourself as an artist makes sense and still being able to to get out and work and make sure that you have a career while at the same time holding on to your value yeah it's not easy to do i mean the process of self-value is not it's not really natural because i think and it doesn't it's not just musicians it's kind of just everyone that exists in a society i guess it's like there's a the whole thing kind of functions on devaluing yourself, or at least telling you that you should. And, and that's where, you know, the way everything kind of works, you get into that mindset yourself, where you're like, um, especially when you start playing music, you know, there's pay to play. It's like, there's this concept of you're lucky to be here, or um, you can't really ask for anything. There, there's lack of comfort. I mean, there's not really, you kind of have to work towards building a value. And I think even then you still kind of have that scarcity mindset that it could all go away or you're lucky to be here or, um, you know, it's music. So it doesn't have inherent value because everyone just listens to it for free. I mean, all these things kind of feed into our, but I think all we can do is kind of try to reprogram from that. And just as humans, you know, just having inherent value being alive, um, and just not let anybody take advantage of that. It's, it's weird, because it's kind of the opposite of what it may feel to do naturally. And it, it feel, you almost have to be kind of like a dick in a way. Not, it feels that way. But you, only, you have to be like honest and forward, because most things, most people will try to take advantage of you um, unless you say something about it. It's not, you know, you don't expect people, especially in this industry, to kind of do the right thing up front. So, when I say you have to be a dick, you kind of have to be like, challenge what's kind of in place. I think that's the, like the hurdle to get over because it takes a lot of, a lot of weird self-created confidence to kind of get there where you're like, you know what, fuck this shit. Like, I don't need this. You know, the whole thing is nothing without art, artist, music, yet I feel like completely useless some days or, you know, worrying about, you know, a lot of people worrying about like how to, pay rent or, or pay for the house or pay for the electricity and all this stuff and it's none of us are on solid ground but like the guy at Spotify you know they're not really worried they're doing fine and for I've used the Amazon examples like they're all good but every artist I know is having an existential crisis right now so that's a really long tangent but I was on board for that entire okay. tangent beautiful see um thank you but yeah, it's, it's just kind of getting a place internally where you kind of just not in like an egotistical way but just like, I should be here, I can be here, I'm allowed to do this, I don't have to like apologize or tiptoe or whatever. You know, if something doesn't seem fair, it's probably not, so just say something about it. Um, and that's the thing I would try to encourage other artists to do. Um, and just people in general, all essential workers. You guys, anybody that's a person doing a thing, it's like, you know, get the most out of it, because nobody else is gonna determine that value for you, so. Yeah. Well, man, it's, it is hugely encouraging to see. I mean, I, I can't think of any other example that's as clear cut and quick as what happened with you when you made the statement that you did and then saw a pretty immediate result for yourself and for your fellow artists involved in that, in that particular series. So that is, that's hugely encouraging to see that's that, it, that it works. Yeah. yeah. It's just, if you, you know, cause it would have been, the reason I said yes to that is because I have this mindset where I'm like, well, yeah. We, that sounds like good promotion. I'm supposed to say yes to that. And I was like, wait a second. Trillion dollar corporation. They got money. Why are they not paying us? So then I, the question, and then, yeah, that's, but that's how it is. Until you say something, no one's going to even think that it should be, it should work differently. So, yeah. Yeah. 
well, it was a massively creative solution to that. It was good, fun. good for you, man. I'll wait, very much stay tuned and see what, uh, how you creatively solve uh, the next bit of uh, uh, of injustice that you come up. Okay, I mean, that was I got a huge kick out of it. So good, yeah, I good had fun. You. It's yeah. made the whole thing tolerable. Yeah, that's that's what self entertainment. Well, so we're hearing um, uh, we're going to hear a a re record. Um, so what do you call it? Reissue, re-recording, the 2020 version, excuse me, of, uh, of a tune that, man, the, the music video that you did in the truck where you uh, spoke the words, that did that spoken word, it, that remains about my favorite video in the history of the world. So I love oh. it. I've heard you guys play Thank it, you. the 2017 version when you were touring uh, in New York, and uh, now we've got an updated version of it coming up now. What's, uh, what is coming up next? Yeah, All the Punks Are Domesticated, which is a song that I wrote probably six, six years ago, five, six years ago, and... Uh, this year, everything in the song came true in a weird, self-fulfilling prophecy kind of way. Because um, when I was playing the song and singing through it, I was like, oh, shit, this is all happening. No. So I figured, full circle, we played this in 2017, the Paste studio. Now we'll do it again, but update it. All right. If I can remember the words. Okay. <laughs> Kiara, Dom. Love them. Peace. Thank you, guys. It's 
it's easily accessible just like anything on the planet and no one really minds it's just a sign of the times you know your time a dozen mind in a world that gave everyone a voice we have no other choice we're all so important tell me about yourself tell me about yourself tell me about yourself all right i will Remarks An apple falls at the park Where your body lay Deep within the clay It's just another day Where all cops are hired to serve and protect scared white people in nice neighborhoods always read the small print all the people in power are psychopaths. They refuse to wear a mask because now they're already wearing like 50 of them. And all the most violent people are the most terrified. Jesus was not white, blue eyes. America was built on genocide. The protesters did not start the fire. And I know that I am probably preaching to the choir. But the topic of life should never be political. It's the one thing we all have in common. And on your deathbed, you won't be proud of what you earned or the hurt you caused. You'll remember when your heart was soft. And things these days, they may feel backwards and insane, but maybe it's just growing pains. I wrote this song six years ago and it all came true. I guess whatever you think about eventually becomes you. All of the All of the freaks have gone to Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Dom. Thank you, Kiara. This sounds Thank wonderful. You. It's just a total pleasure. It's extra, extra special to be doing this right now. Um, and hopefully the the lessons of 2020 and the, the lessons of self-valuation that you so, so brilliantly made uh, continue to stick and you're able to continue to spread that message in creative ways and really connect with people, man. We just love you being here and uh, best of luck on piecemeal, man. It's out on March 5th of 2021. So we'll stay tuned and hopefully at that time we'll be able to do it again. Yes. Beautiful. Bye. All right. Thank you.